Greetings, beautiful people. This is SB Favor Thinking Podcast, and my name is SB Favor. How are you doing today? It is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. It's another day to be thankful and another day to focus on what is good. As I always say, if you focus on what is good, then you can project something good to happen. So focus on what is good. If you are out there traveling about, make sure you are wearing your mask, using your hand sanitizer, and staying safe. Make sure you keep your family safe. If you love them, keep them safe. Rebecca is here this evening and we are going to discuss relationships, abusive relationships. We all have been through something crazy one way or another. All of us, unfortunately. Um, Abusive relationships um, from friends, family members, co-workers. You know, there are people out there that um, unfortunately they hurting and sometimes they are abusive. So we're going to talk about that uh, this evening. And Rebecca, how are you doing today? Hi, good evening, SB. I am doing very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm moving right along. (laughs) Moving right along. You know, um, over the weekend, I was watching uh, the Wendy Williams movie and the Wendy Williams documentary. And I started thinking about um, emotional abuse and how that can take place in a relationship you know emotional abuse is different than physical physical abuse wow that's a whole nother level of something else because that's violence right yes but emotional abuse is um in my opinion isn't it's camouflaged because some people see it as something that is not as harmful as physical abuse but emotional abuse is very harmful because it can affect your uh self-esteem um it can affect you mentally it can um affect basically uh everything in your life you know being uh verbally assaulted or criticized or put down um that's emotional abuse so me and Rebecca, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And um, we're going to talk about the positive uh, side you can turn to if you uh, have been through some type of emotional abuse. We are not psychologists. This is our personal experience and our opinions. I have to put that disclaimer out there because guess what? <laughs> some people, uh, sometimes they get things twisted. You know, when you share your personal experience, that's that's knowledge right there. So that's that's what we we speak from. We speak from our personal experience. So, um, Rebecca, um, this is a this is a would you say complicated topic? Yeah, it's complicated because you know, um, some these are things that you know uh, we don't talk about, mm-hmm. right? That mm-hmm. you know uh, we were we were taught, you know, what happens at home stays at home, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You don't you don't mention uh, certain things. Um, and a lot of women, um, you know, don't, don't want others to know that they're going through some type of physical, emotional, or even verbal. Right. Um, so it, 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 yes, it can, it can get complicated, but, uh, but there's hope if, if, if a woman is, or a man, yeah. um, is willing to step out of faith and, uh, and, and take a step. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned man, because sometimes, um, um, society for, forgets about men. Men are abused too. Let's not forget that. Men are um, physically abused, uh, emotionally abused. And so we cannot forget about men. You know, sometimes society focuses more on um, what happens to women and um, it sometimes it's a double standard. So we got to remember that, yes, men are abused too, but uh, emotional abuse, what would you say is, uh, how would you describe, I should say, how would you describe emotional abuse? Well, you know, emotional abuse is, is more um, the language, mm-hmm. um, the language or uh, maybe what's the word I want to use, um, mm-hmm. non-language mm-hmm. Uh, abuse. Yeah. And um, that that emotional ab- abuse is, is what you just said affects the person inside. Yeah. Uh, their their mm-hmm. state, of, their self-esteem. emotional status. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, their emotional state, I should say. Yes. Um, you know, and, and a lot of you know, I mean, do you want me to throw some examples out there? Because yeah. I, mean, mm-hmm. you know, I have some examples. I yeah. Mean, you know, some examples is basically you know a, a person who is extremely demanding. Mm. Um, 
that's emotional abuse. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, someone that has intense jealousy. Yes. Or yep. rages. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, someone that's constantly wanting to, man or woman, yes, look indeed. at your cell phone. Who have you been talking to? Wow. Um, or if you are speaking to a colleague mm-hmm. in regards to a business matter. Right. And you have someone, again, having a fit, a jealous rage and accusing you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Suspicion. Of, yes. of, of cheating. Yes. With someone who you are on the phone with when it's just a colleague, it's business. Wow. Um, and especially isolation. Yes. When someone is trying to isolate you from family, from friends. Yes. And they're trying to, um, uh, change you, Mm -hmm. um, and make you feel guilty that you want to be with family or you want to perhaps do something for you, but they make you feel guilty. They give you like a guilt trip so that you could not go or so that you could include them in everything that you do. This is all about uh, mind control. And and this is very much emotional abuse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Emotional abuse can drain you um, mentally because... Uh, the individual tries to make everything about them because see in a relationship that is healthy if the person is uh, unselfish that's not somebody that would drain you but somebody that is selfish that's someone that would drain you because they want everything to be about them and as you stated Rebecca they want you to feel guilty about something you don't do for them or something they want you to do or um manipulation manipulation is another one they will man- yes they will manipulate you to think a certain way contrary to your own values absolutely they will manipulate you to think contrary uh of your own values also you know- Oh, go ahead. Also, relationships can be uh, a reflection of who you are, whether it be toxic or health. So, so keep that in mind. If you're with someone and you've always been a happy-go-lucky person, you always have a good attitude. Now you're in a relationship with somebody and your your whole attitude has changed. Instead of you becoming a better person, now you are basically dragging every day. That that sounds like somebody that could be um, emotionally abused because they are drained. But go ahead. What was you going to say? What were you going to say? Well, well, what you said was absolute. It's true. A, a, a relationship should not leave you emotionally drained, whether it's a, a, a boyfriend, mm-hmm. husband, That's right. brother, sister, mm-hmm. uh, even even parents, best friend. Um, co-worker. Yes. Uh, that that the, if you feel emotionally drained, um, you need to uh make an assessment of that friendship. But you know, an, another uh part of emotional use is you know when when a man or a woman actually you know makes fun or, or begins to mark mock the mm-hmm. person's body. Yes, harsh criticism. Uh, that, that that does happen. Mm-hmm. Criticize your body, mm-hmm. and then they begin to tell them they should wear what mm-hmm. they should not wear. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of perfume they should buy you know all these are all little things that in the beginning of uh, the beginning of a relationship you know so one could see wow you know he or she is they're so attentive oh they just want the best for me you know actually mm-hmm. it's the contrary yes um they, they want to control yes and and when you said about the um you said something about your values yes you know, mm-hmm. when when you're in a relationship, um, first and foremost, what needs to come on the table, what are my values? These are my values. Yes. And these are my values that I was taught, mm-hmm. that my ancestors taught me, that come in from generation to generation. And these are things that have kept my family whole. Yes. So for someone to come in now and bring division and what was once whole, mm-hmm. that, that needs to be questioned. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they try that type of personality tries to form a person to something they want you to be. Like I said, if you you've always been a happy person with a good attitude and you've always uh, been positive and you've always just been a very progressive person. Now, all of a sudden you're with somebody, you're dating someone or you probably even married to somebody that they're just draining you every single day because they are making the relationship all about them. They're selfish. And in the process of them making the relationship all about them, they are draining. you. They are not uh, providing the things in the relationship to make it healthy because we're all supposed to exchange 
um, something one to another. And um, nobody can make you happy. We're supposed to make ourselves happy. That's nobody, true. nobody is responsible for making the next person happy. But if we are bringing something as an individual to the table that's good for the next person, and if it's healthy, then what what will happen is you will see that reflect back to you. So, like I say, a relationship is a reflection of who you are, whether it be toxic or healthy. If you're in a healthy relationship, then the two people would reflect that based upon how they talk to each other, how they treat one another, their body language, everything in the relationship. I'm not talking about being perfect, but I'm talking about um, just how you communicate. Some people say, oh, well, I get angry with this person and it's okay for me to talk to him like that. It's okay for me to talk to her like that, you know, if they're angry. No, it's not. Because once you raise your your the volume of your voice, to the person that you're talking to in that moment basically in my opinion you could be emotionally abusing that person just by how you speak to that person you could be um doing harm to their confidence you could be doing harm to uh just their mindset overall so emotional abuse i believe that there are uh several layers to it but the one we're talking about today is when someone puts you down, when someone is criticizing. Uh, Rebecca mentioned jealousy. Um, um, another one that I observed was uh, when you are around this person and you you can't uh, be yourself. You feel like you're walking on eggshells. What kind of craziness yes. is that? What kind yes. of craziness is that where you are married to somebody or dating somebody and you can't be who you are? That's crazy. But anyway... I said that's that, sad. Yeah, that's, it's that's sad. sad. It's sad. And, and and I know, and I know because I, I was I was in that type of relationship. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, you know, you have to get to a point where you sit down and and you say, wait a minute, these are not that I have. This mm-hmm. is this is not my belief. These are not. This is not my ways. That's why it's so important to take time to get to know. Yes, absolutely. Don't rush. Don't rush into uh, getting married. Rush to start living with someone. Don't do it. Get to know them first. Yeah, that is absolutely true. I think a lot of times people settle for less because of how they feel about themselves. I think that sometimes, yeah. um, you know, people sometimes they feel like, oh, well, um, they're not beating me. So let me stay with this person. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Just because they're not beating you does not mean that they are not emotionally abusing. You. you know, the person could be constantly disappointing you. If I, if I know that something would disappoint you, if I knew that I would make a conscious effort not to disappoint. But if that person is constantly disappointing you and they know that they are disappointing, it's almost like they are disappointing you intentionally. That's that's emotional that's emotional abuse because it's normal to have consideration for the next person in terms of well i shouldn't say no because some people aren't normal huh i mean you know it's 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 a norm i should say that um we we should treat one another we should treat one another excuse me with consideration but if somebody is constantly uh disappointing you they reject your ideas they reject your opinions That's emotional abuse. They don't value you. They don't um, consider the good that you are. They don't look at you or treat you according to how valuable you are. So I think that some people, they settle for less and they struggle with self-love. So in turn, they settle for less and they deal with somebody that could emotionally abuse them. That'd be true. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Good point. And you know, and just another thing too, mm-hmm. under that same category, um, we have to be careful too <clears throat> for the patterns of of that partner mm-hmm. um, insulting your family. Wow. Um, or insulting your friends. Mm-hmm. I I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, what came to my mind when you were speaking? Mm-hmm. I remember very a very dear friend of mm-hmm. um, needed to uh, loan someone her car. Uh, her son, mm-hmm. her son was going to college at night mm-hmm. and he needed to use her vehicle. And I, I offered her, uh, I said, take my, take my car. Mm-hmm. I said, drop me off after work. Do mm-hmm. what you got to do. You know, bring me, uh, pick me up in the morning. We'll go to work together. And, um, and I remember, um, in a relationship that I was, 
it. Mm-hmm. Um, that morning that I, as we're driving to go to work, mm-hmm. um, getting a video and that video call ended up basically in interrogation. Wow. It was a, it was in, it was interrogation. Um, and then it began to, uh, it ended in insult, insulting her wow. and verbal abuse, cursing. See. Someone who he did not even wow. never met. Um, so yes, yes, yes. And a lot of the times, you know, we say, oh, well, you know, that, that's just how he is. And oh, well, well, may, you know, mm-hmm. maybe that's his back background. Maybe that's the type of job he had. You know, we cannot put excuses for no one no. to, to, uh, uh, behave in that manner is inexcusable and it is no way to behave. And when Someone begins to do that at an early stage, cut it off, root and run. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you 100%. I was in a, a relationship where the individual didn't like none of us. They didn't like none of my friends. They Everybody was a problem. Everybody was a problem because they were trying to isolate me. Yes. They were trying to isolate me and put me in a position where I couldn't be around people that love me. They they wanted to show how much they love me, but they didn't want others to show that they love me. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once I saw that, it's it it startled me. I would I'm not gonna use the word scared, you know, scared exactly, but it just startled me. It is me a, startling, yeah. It, just a little bit. And then I and I thought to myself, okay, well maybe um this person is just uh you know, they're not used to dealing with someone like me and maybe they're just, you know, a little insecure. No, because guess what? Once you you show someone that you're interested and you reciprocate whatever uh the relationship needs and they still uh act a little loony then you have to pay attention to those flags because um like i said a minute ago you can't make somebody happy you know um we're, we're supposed to make ourselves happy and in return we bring to the table in a relationship what we're filled with we shouldn't be taking our issues to other people making them worse if you're going to be in a relationship if you're going to be married then bring your best to the table so that you can make the other person that you're with better because of who you are because like i said a minute ago relationships can be um, a reflection of who you are whether it be toxic or healthy if you're with someone that is toxic then your behavior at some point is going to reflect what is toxic and when someone is emotionally abusing by insulting you, criticizing you, putting you down. They reject your your ideas. They're verbally abusive. They're manipulating. All of those things lead to emotional because after going through so much with a person like that, you'll just be mentally drained. And when a, when a relationship puts you in that position, it's toxic. It's toxic. And some, Danger and toxic, yes. Yes, and some people can't call, some people are afraid to look at what is toxic. They don't want to look at it. They they ignore it or they justify it. You know, in order for something to be made better, you have to take a look at it. And, you know, like I said earlier, uh, the reason why we're talking about this is because uh, I was watching Wendy Williams over the weekend in her movie. She was married for 20 something years and this man um, that she was married, married to he emotionally abused her now she said he never put his hands on her but he emotionally abused her um because of how he spoke to her how he treated her you know you can give somebody your best and and if they still try to find fault in you that's emotional abuse too A a person like that can um, do all the worst things and justify their behavior, but constantly, constantly look at the, the faults that you have. That's emotional abuse, especially if you're the one in the relationship trying to make things good and they're not trying at all. But yet every time something happens, they blame you for it. That is emotional abuse. They don't look at their own faults. But they blame you for their faults. That is emotional abuse. Yes, it is. But guess what? You don't have to be in that type of relationship if you don't want to. If you want to be healthy, if you want to have a quality filled life, you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to settle for a relationship like that. You know, you don't have to settle uh, for less. If you don't want it now, if you want to settle for less and keep wasting your time in a relationship like that, well, then that's your choice. 
but don't walk around telling everybody about um how bad the relationship is if you want to if you want to continue to stay because that's right we have choices that's right that's right we, we all have a choice to do something different and to do something better if we want to be better so um but that 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 movie it just had me thinking you know in my own life personally I try to work hard every day in all relationships to um, just make them better. You know, uh, emotional abuse doesn't just take place in romantic relationships either. Your your friends can be emotionally. Your friends? Abused. Yeah. They can. A sibling. Yes. A sibling. That's right. Even a child. Oh, my Lord. Even a child. Yes. Even a child. Yes. Even a child could be verbally abusive, mm -hmm. uh, emotionally abusive and physical. And it does happen. It does happen. You see it all the time. But, you know, I, I, I want to take a step back. Mm -hmm. One thing, I didn't get to see the movie, but I'm so interested in seeing it now. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I really liked, mm -hmm. um, it kind of it, it kind of it it piqued my interest, was that she said that every time mm -hmm. she was doing well mm -hmm. and every time she started to make more money and become more successful, mm -hmm. that her husband at the time mm -hmm. would um he would be jealous yeah and he would he would fight with her more wow. and then when she when she started to have the bling and she started to have the the newer cars mm -hmm. he started to go and have cars made in italy she said that herself so he so, was competing with her oh uh, so yeah so i was gonna say that mm -hmm. you know what to ha to be in a relationship where someone's constantly in competition that's toxic listen ooh, that's toxic tiring it's tiring tiring yes it's tiring and um it's completely draining to the point where it it will just erode you it will just wear you down further and further and further further down there is no quality of living in that there is no joy in that there is no peace in that because a person that functions in that type of uh of behavior of of hurting others and uh disrespecting another person and ver being verbally abusive that type of person in my opinion when you see someone like that you can't choose to be with someone like that in relationship even having friends that are uh, male or female friends that are uh abusive and what i mean by abusive you know in, in a friendship way meaning um the person lies they lie to you they yes. are um they don't they they don't respect you they don't show up on time they don't keep their word um they can disappoint you too um they can uh do things that uh get get you upset and it, it, it seems like sometimes, you know, um, a person with that type of personality can do it intentionally as well. Just get you upset. Do things to, knowing that it will upset you. They'll do it anyway. What kind of person does that? Um, someone that was miserable and they're not happy with themselves. Someone that is absolutely. Someone that is miserable. They don't, they do not have peace. Wow. They do not have peace within themselves. Right. At all. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I could say, mm -hmm. I could stand here and say, mm -hmm. you know, I have peace within myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But if, if, and there were times when I didn't have peace. Right. 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 Um, but someone doesn't have that peace that constantly within themselves. It's like they're fighting some demons. Wow. You know, you, you, you hear people say that, right? Mm -hmm. You hear that. It's like a cliche. Mm -hmm. Oh, she leave her alone. She's fighting her demons. Wow. <laughs> you know, you hear that as a, as a cliche, a cliche. Mm -hmm. but we could go deeper into that, but we're not going to do that tonight. Right. But, but, you know, it's someone that's battling things inside of them, things that have gone unaddressed. Yes. Whether in their childhood, mm -hmm. whether in a previous relationship, mm -hmm. um, and they have not addressed it, they have not been healed from it. Right. So they're taking it into a relationship, and they, they and you could even take it in, in your parenting skills as a parent. Wow. So it's your children, because this, the, you know, I, I know we're talking about relationship, but let's yes. include relationship with our children. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, um, children who are constantly yelled at and yelled at and yelled at and yelled at, mm -hmm. they have some type of emotional abuse. Yes, that's the truth. Yes, absolutely. Anxiety, they're, yep. they're jumpy, mm -hmm. nervous. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, and I, I've seen it. 
Um, I've seen it with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. And another thing I want to say is, you know, you know, these children at a young age, they remember things. They remember. And, yes. and, and sometimes there's certain images that they cannot take out of their mind. Mm -hmm. And they're, and, you know, and I don't know if anybody or you, SB, if you mm -hmm. ever had a conversation with a child yes. and they always bring up like the same story, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe something happened a year or two ago and mm -hmm. they're constantly bringing it up. It's because that had a negative impact on their life yes um so you know uh, a parent um is going through in an abusive marriage mm -hmm. you know I, I i am not one to tell anyone right. to get a divorce but i will tell you this if someone is abusing you emotionally right physically that even if they shake you even if they push you and they do it repeated that's abuse yeah. And you need to go. You need to leave. Um, and if you have to dial 911, you dial 911. Yes. Anybody. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, because I mean, I was going to say, mm -hmm. I, you know, listen, if 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 you own your home and you have your children, you don't need to go. Just call 911. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody you don't that. You need to leave your home. You don't need to leave your home. Let mm -hmm. that person be taken out. Absolutely. Anybody that raises their voice at you and they can't talk to you in a calm tone just to ask you to do something or have a conversation that's emotional abuse that's verbal abuse yes. you know um yes. if you get upset with your kids or you get upset with your partner your boyfriend girlfriend whoever or friend there's a way to talk to the next person and if you're upset then take a minute and breathe out and, and don't allow yourself to continue the conversation if you are angry. Because once you open your mouth with that anger that you're not controlling, that anger is going to hurt someone. Yes. And, you know, some people, they think that if they just, uh, if they're just shouting at one another, that's normal communication. That's not normal. That's unhealthy. That's toxic. Yes, it is. And then people say, oh, well, everybody get angry. Yes, everybody gets angry. But guess what? Do you know what uncontrolled anger leads to? I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to, I don't even want to speak that right now, but uncontrolled anger leads to something that is not good. And anyone that does not have temperance to control how they speak to you. And if you don't have control according to how you speak to others, then that's something that you need to work on. You know, we all have uh, different areas in our life that we need to work on. And every relationship, you know, Oprah Winfrey uh, said uh, once, she said, teach people how to treat. And I believe that when she said that, she was talking about your standards and what you tolerate. Yes, yes. If you uh, tolerate anything you're basically basically excuse me giving that person a pass to treat you any kind of way right. but if you have standards and you respect yourself and you love yourself you're not going to just allow someone to treat you any kind of way you're not going to going to allow someone to speak to you any kind of way right. one standard i have in my relationship in all of my relationships this is my standard for all of my relationships my siblings my daughters my romantic relationships all of my relationships when i'm having a conversation with someone and for some reason or another if we get upset with one another and we disagree if i have to at some point even feel like i have to raise my voice that means i need to shut the conversation down if i feel that they are raising their voice if the level if the volume changes if it's no longer just a, a mutual calm dialogue then that means i gotta shut the conversation down and the reason why i have to shut it down is because I start seeing things. I start seeing the elevation of something that I do not like. So a lot of times, if I'm on the phone talking to one of my siblings and I feel like, okay, we disagree about something and I and I hear the elevation of, of their voice, the volume changing, I say to them, wait a minute, I gotta go. <laughs> Let me call you back. Let me call you back. Yeah, and, then they, and then they'll say, okay, they'll be breathing. Okay, okay, okay. And then, you know, I'll get off the phone and I'll pray real quick and, and then I'll let some time go by and then I'll call them back and I'll say, are you okay? Yeah. I'm okay. Then we can finish the conversation. There are and it's beautiful that you could do that. Yes. You know, it's beautiful because there are some siblings that, you know, um, you know, may have had um, some, some, a lot of altercations on the young mm -hmm. and it went into their adulthood mm -hmm. um, and, and, and they don't speak for years, yeah, for years, yeah. years. That's painful. Yeah. And, and it, you know, and and we can't 
can't allow that. We can't allow that. Yes. Um, life is too short, you know, to, to allow um, relationships, especially with your siblings and that's your family. Right. Yes. Now, listen, now, if, you know, if someone's physically abusive, you know, that's that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, obviously they need some help. Mm -hmm. They need some mental help. Mm -hmm. They need some, they need uh, real help. Um, and somebody like that, you might have to, for, for a time mm -hmm. being, keep away. But on little things, you know, um, and, and if you know it's going to escalate, Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Like you said, take a time out and sleep on it. Yeah, you definitely have to take a time out because it will help. You. If I feel myself getting upset about something, I, I, once again, like I said, I just... I take a time out, shut, shut it down, and I just tell myself, keep it in check, keep it in check, because you gotta have, you gotta have self control. You know, uh, when 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 we get angry, people say things that they don't really mean. Well, guess what? Don't let it get to that level, and then you won't have to hear something you didn't want to hear, right? You know, um, why should somebody uh, get to that level and then say something they normally wouldn't say? Come on, now, why why does it have to get to that level? Don't let it get to that level. There should don't be a, let it. Right, there should be a standard in a relationship that says, look, we're not going to allow that in, in this relationship. I tell my friends, look, I love you. You love me. We're going to speak to each other accordingly. If you love me, then you're going to speak to me like you love me. If, if I love you, I'm going to speak to you like I love you. Because guess what? If you don't love that person and you hate that person, when you get angry, basically, you're, that's what comes out. You're speaking to that person like you hate them. That's right. So that is why. Because of, because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. That's right. So that is why we have to have a standard. And if you're dealing with someone if it and you and you are uh, seeing those red flags that me and Rebecca mentioned, guess what? You need to reconsider if you want to keep that relationship. Now, I'm not talking about trying to hurt somebody's feelings and, and, and um, overthinking something, something and looking at somebody's faults the wrong way. I'm talking about red flags. Everything that me and Rebecca mentioned about those red flags, if you're seeing red flags in your relationship, whatever kind of relationship it is, you need to pray about it and you need to consider getting out of that relationship or asking that person, you know, do they want to get some help or, you know, working on a relationship in some kind of, way. if it's not severe, but if it's severe and you're seeing levels of anger and you are emotionally drained and you really, really feel that you are emotionally abused. I would say in the relationship, I would say, yeah, I would say in the, and the only reason why I'm saying that is because like I mentioned a minute ago, I dealt with someone that was trying to drain me in that way. And I said, you know what? Away. I'm out. See you later. <laughs> That's right. You know? That's right. And can I add something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you could go to go and see a counselor uh, or you can see a licensed counselor who may be a pastor mm -hmm. and may, may, may have those degrees in counseling. And um, if you're not sure or if you're dating someone or even, or even if you're in marriage, um, I, I, I advise to get wisdom. You know, as B said, pray, right? Now, sometimes we think that we could pray and pray and pray and pray and think are going to go away. Listen, every man has a free will. That's right. Every person has a free will to make a choice. You can make a choice, but that does not mean that your partner is going to that choice. And you can't make it for him or her. That's you can't. Right. So, you know, when you go to a, a counseling, um, and, and I suggest, you know, if you could go to your pastor, your pastor's wife together as a couple, um, let them listen to what's going on. You know, I, and I, I'm going to share this and because I like to be honest. Um, I, I went to uh, some counseling, uh, actually it was pre counseling. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it got to a point where the discussions were so heated up that, that the counselor said, I'm going to have to start seeing each of you individually. Wow. And um, so he went on his own sessions and I went on my own sessions. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember, and I'll never ever forget this. He said to me, Rebecca, if you want to stay in prison, you can marry this man. But if you want to be free, don't marry this man, wow. right? Mm. Look at that. Ooh. Look at look, it, That's powerful. Yes, and that's it is. Deep. Um, so, 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 you know, so, so yes, did I make my decision? Yes, I did. But then I ended up kind of going back again, because, you know, because of the, the emotional abuse, the guilty, making you feel guilty. Mm. 
uh, using a guilt trip, right? right, and all this and that. Right. But but there came a time that I finally remembered those words, mm-hmm. and I was and I I actually realized what the the situation was that by the grace of God mm-hmm. and the and and the, the the Holy Spirit and through prayer mm-hmm. I was able to be bold bold and say enough is enough mm-hmm. and don't look back don't look you know, back it's, it, it's like the verse that says um. Let me see if I can remember. Um, f- forget not Lot's wife. Don't forget. Forget what happened to Lot's wife. Yes. She looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Sometimes there's some things that we cannot look back. Block the number. Erase the phone number. Block mm-hmm. them. That's right. And be firm. And if you have to say, even as a Christian, if you have to say, if you step on my property, I will call the authorities. See, you have to be bold. You have to get, you know, and that's one thing I really, I like about Wendy Williams. She got her, she got her boldness back. That's right. She exactly. kept her, even when her mother passed away. Mm-hmm. She even went to work and did her interview, her show the same day. Yes, indeed. She yes, was indeed. suffering inside, but she did it. But I want to say, I have to read this verse because, you know, I always have to bring a verse. Yes. You know, this is um in, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 12. It says here, I know that there is nothing better than for them to rejoice and enjoy the good life. Listen, we are here on earth to enjoy the good life, to have peace also to have enjoyment to rejoice and if you're in a relationship where there's no peace and there's no joy but there's abuse and there's yelling and there's screaming and there's pushing and there's control and there's manipulation there is no way that we can carry out and follow this scripture that says there is nothing better than for them who's them us human beings us yes to live the good life and to rejoice and even if you have Children, even if you have children, that abuse will trickle down to them. Get counseling, get advice, get wisdom, and pray. Yes, you have to pray to find your strength. And as Rebecca stated, we all have choices because you can pray about something for someone. And like she said, that that person may not be in agreement to do something better. But you can pray to find your strength because Wendy Williams, you know, uh, she I believe she found her strength and um, she got out of that marriage and she is trying to do better and I commend her for that I know a lot of people are not crazy about her because her job is to tell other people's business but um, she <laughs> is um, doing something better because she got out of that abusive relationship and um, what we're talking about can apply to any kind of relationship because people are hurting and it takes a hurt person to hurt another person but you don't have to choose to be with that hurt person and if it's a family member you don't have to choose to constantly uh, deal with that person you can uh, deal with them from a distance and pray for them um as far as children we have to be mindful how we treat children how we talk to them as far as friends we have to set a standard according to how we want to be treated and how we treat others as far as co-workers we got to set the same standard we should not have low standards and allow people to talk to us any kind of way and treat us any kind of way. and if we expect to be treated well we in turn have to treat others well because we all can do better And we all um, can receive what is good. If we, like I always say, if you focus on what is good, you can receive something good. You can project something good to have. Rebecca, um, thank you for sharing that um, about Lot's wife because, you know, her looking back into something old and not focusing on the new, that represented, um, that salt represented death. And um, unfortunately, she looked back at something that she did not need. And so, um, you know, we have to focus on the good things the good things that are uh, providing peace for us, joy for us. And, you know, you can have a good relationship that is joyful and peaceful and, and uh, harmony, you know, full of harmony. You can have a relationship like that. it takes work. Yes. But you have to set a standard. And so listeners, I, I appreciate you and thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to SB Favorite Thinking Podcast. Um, Rebecca, is there anything I want to share? Uh, you know, I just one more thing just comes to my mind. You know, do not stay with someone and accept the abuse 
because to because of the cars, because of the money in the, in the bank account, yes, because of the house, because of the vacation. Listen, do not stay with someone just because of those things. Because listen to me, we talked about this. I don't know a week ago or two weeks ago. SB, you, mm-hmm. you mentioned faith, right? Yes, you have to have faith in God to know that He will provide for you, and you will lack mm-hmm. no good thing. You can get your own cars, your own house, and take your own vacation. Yes, and do it. In peace. That's right. That's right. That's all I want to say. That's right. And oh, I'm, isn't I'm, that beautiful? I'm so glad. You, I'm so glad you said that because guess what? You said it perfectly. You know, man of God said to you, He said, if you want to be in jail the rest of your life, then you can choose that or not, right? And That's right. if you're with someone that doesn't know how to follow the standard of the relationship, guess what? That's a jail. That's bondage. bondage. So, but um, you know, God is good, and I'm just so glad that you shared that about your personal experience because I'm telling you, um, it's a lot of people that's going through things in relationships. Uh, specifically romantic relationships they're tolerating things they should not tolerate just because they want to be loved just because they want to be with someone you don't have to settle for less oh you I don't. Can't. And, oh. And, and another thing is too it hinders you it's a hindrance it is it, it, really... it hinders your growth yes you know and we are here um um a, 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 as women and men we are here to grow to be successful you know to grow on this earth to produce to rejoice to live, to enjoy. How are you going to do those things with someone that's constantly beating you down, yeah. whether physically or mentally? Mm, mm, mm. And you, and you, you know what? It. There's something else yeah. I want to say before I end yeah. this uh, episode. Women, stop calling men out of their name. I know men do the same thing, and I say the same thing to men. Stop calling women out of their name, but there's some women out there. They they get up in a man's face and call him out of his name. And you know, I've seen this happen where the man he he's uh trying his best to keep his peace and, she, and the woman's all in his face and she's calling him out of his name and as a man he's trying to uh have some kind of restraint you know because he's stronger than her but the woman's all in his face you, do you know how that look it's horrible it's horrible it's horrible see because the man what the man wants is respect respect what the woman wants love that's right yep <laughs> so if the man loves his woman like he loves the lord like he loves the church right and the woman respects her man her husband as she respects the lord see that relationship is going to go on a on a good path but getting in the face and and demeaning and yeah people people have to learn how to uh, maintain harmony in their harmony. relationships because when you learn how to choose your battle learn how to maintain harmony in your relationship um you you know what the standard is you won't tolerate the verbal emotion you won't tolerate Tolerated. But we can go on and on about this topic. Yeah. So <laughs> we gotta we gotta wrap it up. Yeah. Um, you know, listeners, we just want you to be encouraged and as as you know, as I always say, um, please, you know, you gotta live a quality filled life and you gotta choose it. So um if you don't choose it, then how can you live it? You gotta choose it. It's up to you. So our intent is to encourage you. We don't want anybody to feel bad or or, or ashamed or anything like that. Um, our words are just words of encouragement uh, to share our personal experience and to share with you the difference. That's all it's about. So I thank you again for listening to SB Favorite Thinking Podcast. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at sbfavor at yahoo.com via email. You can also find on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SB Favor. I also have a YouTube channel you can find me there at sb favor please click like click the bell so that you can receive a notification each time there is a new episode of sb favor thinking podcast please leave me some feedback if you leave me something negative i'm going to ignore you because that's what i do i only focus on the positive so i thank you again for listening to sb favor thinking podcast please share this podcast with many people as you can thank you so much for listening you have a good day